You're the one I want. You are the one I want. Hoo, 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 honey. Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about Flight of the Navigator. Flight of the Navigator is a 1986 theatrical release directed by Randall Kleiser, cinematography by James Glennon, and editing by Jeff Gorson and Janice Parker, music by Alan Silvestri, and it's written by Michael Burton and Matt McManus. Randall Kleiser is best known for Honey, I Blew Up the Kid, The Blue Lagoon, Grease, and this. James Glennon is best known for Return of the Jedi, The Conversation, Altered States, and Weird Science. Jeff Gorson I covered in the video about Tron. The link will be in the description. Janice Parker is best known for The Cannonball Run, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Rocky 2 and this. Alan Silvestri is best known for The Polar Express, Forrest Gump, Predator, and Captain America. Michael Burton is best known for Shoot to Kill, Aldrich James, Traitor Within, Stuck on You, and this. And this is Matt McManus's only credit. The film stars Joey Kramer, Paul Rubens, Cliff DeYoung, Veronica Cartwright, Matt Adler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Howard Hesseman. Joey Kramer plays David Freeman, and he's best known for The Clan of the Cave Bear, Runaway, I Man, and this. Paul Rubens plays Max, and he's best known as being Pee Wee Herman. Cliff DeYoung plays Bill Freeman, and he's best known for The Craft, Glory, Shock Treatment, and this. Veronica Cartwright plays Helen Freeman and she's best known for Alien, The Witches of Eastwick, The Birds, and Scary Movie 2. Matt Adler plays Jeff Freeman at the age of 16 and is best known for The Day After Tomorrow, Life, Teen Wolf, and this. Sarah Jessica Parker plays Carolyn McAdams and she's best known for Sex and the City, both the show and the films, and Failure to Launch. Howard Hesseman plays Dr. Farday and he is best known for WKRP in Cincinnati, About Schmidt, The Rocker, and this. The film was shot in Florida and Norway. The Trimaxian drone ship is entirely CGI and it is amazing. <laughs> the film received mostly positive reviews, especially about their visual effects. It has an 83% on Rotten Tomatoes. There was a remake rumored, and then in 2017, Lionsgate announced a reboot. The ship was a part of Disney World's Backlot Tour. Paul Rubens wanted the voice actor for Max to remain a secret, so he's given a different name in the credits, though he does the Pee Wee Herman laugh, so I don't know what's so secretive about that. Randall Kleister does a lot of nods to his older work like Grease and Starsky and Hutch. And I will link the trivia and goofs in the description. Remember to take them with a grain of salt. The music in this movie is so 80s and I was living for it. The opening song is just about as 80s as it gets. It's like Breakfast Club and Predator melt into one and Alan Silvestri did Predator, so that makes sense. But it was just so 80s and I was like, this is everything. The cinematography is spectacular, specifically in the woods. The lighting and smoke effects and just production design. Production design throughout the film is incredible. The ship interior, amazing. Home interiors, incredible. But in general, the music and the cinematography, a lot of this movie was really above average. Joey Kramer delivered. When he was crying, I was like, wow, this kid is really good. For 1986, the effects are incredible. The way the ship changes shape, the way the ship reflects the ground, all of it obviously fake, but just so amazing. I can't imagine seeing it in 1986. That would have been really special. The movie isn't perfect. There is a part of the plot that I started to be like, okay, you're losing me, I'm a little bored. And it's when they're flying around aimlessly trying to find directions and stuff. It goes on a little too long for me to be still funny but I didn't get fully lost. Like they, they roped it back in and brought it back to the plot. But overall, this is the first movie in a very long time besides animated releases, relax, that has felt like a true kids movie. I'm starting to see the effects of creating touchstone pictures because this movie was downright fun. I was watching it and I was entertained through and through. I was along for the ride with David and Max and just, it was so fun. Yeah, I got a little bored at that part, but compared to past Disney movies that are definitely for adults, this was just so refreshing to see it totally, absolutely made for a kid because I know if I had been 10 seeing this movie for the first time, I would have been like, this is amazing. I love this movie. It would have become a classic for me. So I really cherish the fact that this was like the first like, live action, like this is for kids movie in a long time. That's all I have for Flight of the Navigator. I really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was so fun. So I think I will give it maybe like seven ships alien abductions out of 10. Our total movie count is 
Parent Death Toll and Cry Counter are still the same. If you want to keep up with what movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram or Twitter and you'll find out what movie I'm watching when. I put up videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Until next time, comment, like, subscribe, but I'm gonna try to love you are, so you do you, and don't be the doctors about it, I would say, the NASA people trying to, you know, keep them hostage. <laughs> and weird science weird science oh god we're like really mid 80s and i am in it michael burton is best known for shoot to kill aldrich ames tra <laughs> traitor with it and this is my matt man it's his only critic the ship used in the movie was part of disney world's backlot tar tar